all infinite functions, a classifier, a uh, classification algorithm can work with. For example, if we decided to use like a convolutional neural network, uh, like uh, or maybe TensorFlow, or maybe Kafi, uh, or maybe a multi-layer perceptron, or maybe KNN, it doesn't matter. Could be any algorithm. This green um, square is going to represent to us all functions in the universe. And this yellow area represents the bias of that particular algorithm. What's a bias? A bias is basically an, a, is, a, a space of admissible functions. It's a space uh, from which the classification algorithm selects functions to, to define the best classifier. For example, here we have a, a, a kind of a, a strong bias. We say strong because the space is smaller. And here we have like a, a, a weaker bias. A weaker bias contains more functions. If I tell you guys that this is best than this, can you believe? I mean, Sometimes people think that a classification algorithm should consider as many functions as possible, as you can see on the right. But that's not true, because if you have as many functions as possible, you're going to be probably, you're going to be most probably converged to a classifier or a regression function that's going to behave like this high order polynomial function that's going to be capable of, of reaching zero error in your sample. But what's going to happen afterwards if new data come? For example, if new linear or approximately linear data comes here, this linear function is going to be better. This other one that's a high order polynomial function is going to behave crazily. It's going to go probably to over, almost uh, uh, plus infinite probably here. Or maybe it's going to go afterwards to a negative infinite here. We don't know because that bias comes from a very complex set of functions. So every time we have a very complex set of functions, uh, we probably go and the direction of overfitting. We're gonna get a classifier which is very likely capable of representing uh, with zero error our sample. But when we apply it in the real world, it's gonna, it's gonna bring like, a, it's, gonna, it's gonna behave badly. It's gonna have like a very bad um, expected risk. I mean, the risk for unknown examples, for examples we've never seen before. Okay, from this uh, basic introduction, I'm going to show you something using the distance-weighted nearest neighbors. The distance-weighted nearest neighbors is a very basic algorithm. It's usually used to perform a regression, and it's based on the, the k nearest neighbors. So, uh, if you don't know the k nearest neighbors, here we go. For example, let's consider we have two attributes. Here we could have, like, for example, pressure, and here temperature in a given region, a given world region. And we have some examples in red and some, and some other examples in green. Let's say those examples are from the, the positive class and those related to the negative class, for example. If we, get, if we, we have like a query, uh, that query point is going to be close or nearby, nearby to some examples. And we're going we're gonna, to uh, define the output class using uh, the nearest neighbors. So, for example, if, if we are very close to the greens, this one is going to be classified as green. If it's close to the red ones, it's going to be classified as, as red, for example. Okay, here's an, a, a good example. If we have like a k nearest neighbors using k equals 3, that means our query point is going to be analyzed, assessed in terms of the three nearest neighbors. For example, these three nearest neighbors 
are voting two for red and one for green. So the class for this guy here is gonna be is gonna be red. If we take instead five nearest neighbors, we have three votes for green and two for red. And that's gonna it's gonna be green for sure. If we have like six, we're gonna have three votes for red and three votes for green and we're gonna have like a tie and that that we bring like some some sort of indecision and we should decide somehow in our case i'm much more interested in uh, coding with you guys the distance way to news neighbors which is a variation this variation is basically like that let me go to to my terminal here so if I open here GNU plot and I plot like a, a Gaussian function, let's use here a Gaussian function like this, x is squared divided by two times sigma is squared. I'm gonna consider that our sigma is equal to one just to, to start and plot it. Okay. What's happening here? Ah, oh, it's not like that. It's like that. Okay, so here we have a good example of some Gaussian function. What does it mean? It means that if we have a query point that's located somewhere in the space, if we have very, uh, if we have neighbors which are very very close to this point in the space, it, their relative distance is going to be close to zero. And that means that nearby point in the space is going gonna, is gonna to have a weight close to one. If the, the, near, the nearest point to this query point is very far, it's like this distant, around 2.5 units, the relevance of that neighbor is going to be smaller. It's going to be like uh, below 0 0.05, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, I don't know some somewhere uh, uh, some some value like that so every time a point's close it's gonna be very relevant to define the output for this query point and every time it's very far it's not that important so for example if i change sigma to two let's see what's gonna happen with our gaussian function it's gonna be it's, it's gonna open see that it's it's now more spreaded all along the distant the, the distances so i'm gonna open it more like using sigma equals five and here we see a, another phenomenon it's gonna open widely instead if sigma is very small like 0.1 take a look it's gonna be like an impulse it's almost impossible to see where it touches one here because GNU plot is not that good to plot this sort of of function but maybe if i use 0.25 maybe it plots better almost yeah it's not that good maybe 0.5 okay so now you can see that get okay, that's gonna get back here so every time this instance which is a query point is used in my space we're gonna build up like a Gaussian function around it, which brings this sort of um, of behavior we, we, we've been seeing here. So every time a point is very close, its relevance is gonna be greater. Every time a point is very far, its relevance to classify this point, this query point is gonna be smaller. That's that's the, the whole idea about the about, um, the distance way to nearest neighbors. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna do something very simple with you guys. I'm gonna define a simple data set here and use it for learning. So we're gonna start with our distance weighted nearest neighbors. So this is the distance weighted, weighted, distance weighted nearest neighbors. Okay. GWNN, which is based in the K nearest neighbors, as I told you before. Okay. So to start, I'm gonna define our data set. For example, consider we have a very simple data set. Our data set 
is basically a, a, a identity function. Identity function. So every time I give like a minus five, I'm gonna get minus five as answer. Every time I give like plus five, I'm gonna have plus five as answer. This is R, this is the, the R language. It's quite easy to, to use it. So I'm gonna run here R, let me show again, R, enter. You can use like VR Studio or something like that. And now I'm gonna load my code here. Okay. And just see the variable data set. You're gonna see, oh, sorry, that's not the way to go. I should have done like a column, a column bind here. So, okay, now I'm gonna see. We have two columns. So every time I give as input minus five, I want to obtain as output minus five. If I provide minus four, I want to have minus four as output. So this column represents the inputs and this column, the output values. So we're gonna use this simple strategy to learn that every time I give some input, I want to have this output. Just that, very simple. To do that, what, I, what I'm gonna do is simply this. Here I'm gonna write our DWNN algorithm. That's gonna be a simple function here. Our function is gonna receive some data set. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it D and some query, some query. And also we're gonna have to provide a sigma value. We're gonna do something quite simple. So every time people provide us a query, Remember, we're gonna have a data set. This data set has several columns. So how many columns are uh, composed basically our, our, um, our input space or our space that, uh, in which the query is and out of that we're gonna, we're gonna have the output. Actually, that's basically the number of columns of D minus one. Minus one because the last column is the output. So this is the, out, the input space, the input space size. And some people commonly ask me what's this point about? It's, it's just a point, it doesn't, doesn't mean anything. Okay, so now I'm gonna do this. So we have like the dimension here, okay. So I'm gonna compute the column, the number of columns in D to know what's the dimension with the output, the, the output dimension is gonna be the dimension two, any column is gonna provide, take a look, any column is gonna provide the number of columns we have in this data set. So minus one is gonna tell me that we're gonna go from the first dimension until the first dimension because just one dimension is gonna be provided as input space. And the output space is basically the last dimension, which is the, the second one. So now I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna run an apply function. That's very nice because that's gonna perform a, a loop uh, along the data set. So I say, given this data set, perform a loop using the rows. If I use two, it's gonna be using the calls, the columns. If it's one, it is along the rows. If it's along the rows, I'm gonna get every row and that row, I'm gonna extract from that row the input space. Take a look. Maybe it's better to, to call like just input space here. I'm gonna get, in this case, the input space dimensions. In our case, it's just the first dimension. It doesn't matter, it could be more, but it's just the first dimension here. So now I have to measure how distant that first dimension is from the query. And to measure that distance, I'm gonna use here with you guys the Euclidean distance. This is basically the Euclidean distance. Okay, so here we have an Euclidean distance and that distance just tells me 
how far, let me show you again, how far we are, let's define here some, some sigma value, how far 